Hey guys, welcome to my video on production cost graphs. I'm going to walk you through a little bit of these crazy graphs you find in your cost chapter in your textbook. Uh, the first one's pretty easy. It's just based directly on the easy part of those cost tables that my last video was about. Uh, we're going to just rely on the equation total cost equals fixed cost plus variable cost. Uh, if you graph a fixed cost on a graph with these axes, quantity on the horizontal axis, cost measured in dollars or whatever your currency is on the vertical axis, then a fixed cost will just be a flat line. No matter what the quantity, it will always be the same cost. So fixed cost just looks like that. It's done. Variable cost, however, well, variable cost was always messier. It changes with quantity. Now we often give it this S shape to match our assumptions about marginal product of labor. Uh, remember when we went through the tables, we had that first portion where there was increasing marginal product of labor and decreasing marginal cost, and then there was decreasing marginal product of labor and increasing marginal cost. Well, what's happening here is that at first, Variable cost is slowing down, you could say. As you add Q, it flattens out and adds less and less. And then after a certain point, when you add Q, it starts adding more and more and more cost. So we often give this S shape just to match what we had said before about the marginal product of labor. And then total cost is those two things plus each other. Fixed cost plus variable cost is total cost. So it will intersect right here at fixed cost. And then it will always be fixed cost dollars higher than variable cost. So I got this little marker here to show like this is equal to the height of the fixed cost. And watch, wherever I am along these two curves, they are always fixed cost dollars apart from each other. Now what happens next? Because we don't actually use this graph very often. What we use instead is this crazy mess over here. And I just want to help to explain a little bit of what's going on in it. It looks a lot scarier than it actually is. So our marginal cost line usually has some kind of a U shape. And that again is because of what we've assumed about the marginal product of labor. First increasing, then decreasing. So at first, marginal cost is going down, and then it's going up. The average costs are always are just these curves divided by Q. And so if you divide a flat number by quantity, then the higher the quantity goes, the smaller it'll be. And so the fixed cost starts high because you're dividing by something near zero, and then goes down, 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 down forever never actually touching zero, but getting infinitely close to it as Q rises. The variable cost and total cost, however, when you divide these by Q, when you divide by small numbers, these numbers can blow up, and so these numbers often come from off the graph. But then, as you increase Q, the average will be falling, until over here when the costs rise so fast, that it overwhelms the dividing by Q. And so we'll often get this average total cost curve that's also U-shaped. Now one thing worth mentioning, and I'm going to draw this because that graph was scary looking with all the hash marks and everything else. Dollars for cost, quantity, uh, let's see. I'm going to leave off the average fixed cost. I'm just going to keep it simple right now. I'm going to have a marginal cost and an average total cost. We usually have shapes kind of like that. I do want to point out a couple of the mathematical things going on here. Uh, one thing that might help you at some point is that marginal cost intersects average total cost at the lowest average total cost. Now why is that? Marginal cost is what, how fast cost is changing. If you add another quantity, you add a marginal cost. And at these low quantities over here, marginal cost is less than average total cost. And so when you add in small numbers, it brings the average down. 
and so our average is falling. After this point, marginal cost is greater than average total cost, so we start adding in big numbers and averaging them in, and the average cost starts rising. I can make the exact same argument about average variable cost. Marginal cost will intersect with it at the bottom. You know, I think that about covers it. It's kind of a scary looking graph, so I give it its own video. But really, it's just an application. It's just a depiction of the tables we've already been solving for. So it's kind of hard to keep track of it all. But if you just trace the lines and keep attention, like this is the average total cost line. There it is. This intersection here, the marginal cost, that's the lowest the average total cost is ever going to be. Uh, and whatever else you want to look at on here. So we're going to use these graphs a lot in the coming weeks to talk about perfect competition, to talk about monopoly, uh, to compare the two. It's going to be fun, you guys. So I hope it's helpful to you to see it. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching. Happy econing.